<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome for the presentations and the colloquium today. And um, thanks for um, Dr. Kim to uh, invite me for this colloquium as well, which is a really great opportunity for me to connect more with UniSA and the Korean um, community as well. And um, first of all, I think I'll give a little bit of introductions about myself. And um, I'm the Director of Research Quality and Innovations at the moment at uh, Western Sydney University. My role is actually trying to see what collaborations that actually we can enhance and also improve the research culture at the school for my universities. And um, I actually have another role at the moment, is the Associate Dean International, just start um, yesterday, no, just start on 1st of December, which actually aiming to um, uh, improve the relationship with for undergraduates and postgraduates uh, studies and research in terms of uh, MOU and other collaborations with um, outside Australian University as well. And um, those will actually really um, great for these opportunities to bring it actually further from this platform. And um, for my research directions, um, actually uh, before that, I actually joined Western Sydney University eight years ago. And um, before that, I was on the Gold Coast at Griffith University. I've done most of all my educations in Hong Kong. And um, that's, uh, uh, that's I choose my career development in Australia 12 years ago. And um, talking about my research directions, I have a bit of a diverse research directions in here. I have um, backgrounds on construction management, which I'm going to talk a little bit more today which, because of the, uh, the research themes in here. But I also have another direction is on recycled concrete on technologies, which develops a recycled concrete that can be as drawn as virgin concrete, which I'm actually currently also under a commercialized program that I'm trying to promote the concrete that I'm selling as well. And, um, before I go into in-depth discussions about what today I'm going to talk about from the construction management perspectives, um, this is actually Western Sydney University campus back in Sydney and a Palmach campus. And um, for Mrs. Ken, that is the jacaranda, and uh, that's the purple tree that everyone loves in Australia. What I'm aiming to talk today is, um, you can see it's a model that actually we have developed for looking into the life cycle perspectives for green building. For life cycle perspective, what is that about? You can see that life cycle is a cradle to cradle process. You start from the material productions. That means when you produce the materials, you have the energy, everything you need to spend, and then go into the manufacturing, constructions, operational, which is the majority of the time, and also majority of the research currently are focusing on operation because they, most of the time they have about like a longer period compared to the other process. And then at the end, the building will still be disposal, so then demolish. But after that, it's not the end of the life cycle. We have to going back to the initial. That's what we call cradle to cradle process. Because I'm focusing on green building, um, as you familiar probably lead in um, American systems, in Australia we have also similar systems. We call it as a Green Star. How Green Star work is, Green Star is separated into different, eight different categories. It's on um, indoor environment quality, water, energy, transport, innovation, land use and ecology, management, materials and emissions. You can see that we have different points under different categories. And the innovations is the extra points that we can get on it. And um, you can see different categories, we occupy different points. But the majority of that is the energy parts and indoor environmental quality. And then after that is management materials. For this particular presentation today, I'm actually focusing on the energy sessions. And um, how can actually Green Star work is um, just a brief introduction. We have different star. We have four star, five star, and six star, and uh, according to how many points that you can get. And um, each component, they actually require very specific criteria that how you need to do. For example, in materials, one of the criteria is how you use the cement substitute materials for the concrete productions, and um, they have to specific clearly how many percentage of your buildings are using the cement substitute materials, then you can get two points or one point based on your proportions. That's why you can see if 
out of the 100 points in here, if you can get about 49 to 60, 59 points, you got four star. And then if you get about up to 74 points, you got five stars. And over 75 points, you got six stars. That's why it's a very rigorous and very detailed calculation process for you to get different stars for your buildings. Going to the greenhouse gas emissions, um, in here you can see that from the Australian non-residential buildings perspectives, in 2009, we have um, 134.6 PJ uh, energy usage um, compared to the predictions of 2020s, about 170, which you can see has an increase, obviously, because of the energy consumption from all of the resources. But the thing is, we have a lot of targets and a lot of policies. But the thing is, how can we actually aim to reduce it? It's still very weak in a way. And um, maybe also good to highlight that in Australia, we actually have the highest emission per person of 26 tonnes of CO2 emitted per person. I mean, every single of you are emitted 26 tonnes of carbon emissions every year. And it's the highest in Australia. Oh, sorry, in, it's the highest around the world. And uh, that is something that we need to do on. And Australian government has been putting a lot of different efforts in. They put a lot of resources, like the carbon tax, although it's gone already, but there's a lot of different things that they try to put it in. Regardless how you're going to do it, we will still be the highest emissions per person, maybe because of the populations and also the, because of the other resources that is very hard to reduce, same as other countries as well. And um, compared to all those different ways of emissions, you can see that they can be um, emitted wide different perspectives from the equipment and the lightings are the highest amount of the percentage. And um, heating is about 18% in here. And we have domestic hot water and others that is actually emitted from the energy usage, and, uh, which is calculated based on the direct emissions from the fuel components and also the emission from the electricity usage, which is the operational usage in here. That's why bringing to the importance of this project want to achieve is there are a lot of um, different ways that you can actually help to improve and also focusing on the green building perspective right in here in Australia with the Green Star um, Green Building Certification Systems. We actually um, develop a um, computer-aided models focusing on the building envelopes. As you remember, that I'm focusing on the categories of energy. That's why it's the majority point of that. And I um, want to focus on the building envelopes and looking into different climate zones in Australia. That is um, separated into eight different zones based on the geographical locations of where we are. You can imagine that in Darwin, probably they have uh, hotter environment compared to the Western Australia and the Southern Australia. And those obviously will affect your energy consumptions for the air conditionings, etc. as well. And, um, and that's the reason that we are focusing on a particular credit called 15A, which includes about five points here. And, uh, but the 15A is included with uh, other perspective in the credits as well because it's some 15A, B, C, D down to E as well. And its total is about 20 points, which is the majority of the points in the credits in the Green Star systems. And um, this one is focusing on the design as built because of the commercial building. Actually, we found it has a higher proportion in Australia compared to the other types of buildings. That's what we are focusing on. And, um, after we look into the model, the model can also help to determine which one is the optimal op options because there are a lot of different uh, types of building envelopes we can use, like different types of roof, different types of walls. But the thing is, which one is the best based on where you are? And um, the model actually can help you to show which one is the optimal from the life cycle perspective as well. This is the aims of the project. And um, uh, going back a little bit of the credits that we have, as I mentioned that we are focusing on the 15A in here, which is about five points out of the 20 points, but actually it's go down to the B, C, D and E in here, which compared to the other components of what we are looking at. And the most is obviously 20 points in here, but there are some looking into the predicted building greenhouse gas emission that can be reduced by the best practice attributes and um, based on the different systems, um, basics, and um, all the other stuff in here as well. 
and um, this is based uh, because basics is based in New South Wales, and that's why you use that for comparison in here. And um, this is actually the interface of the model that we developed. As you can see, that there are three main um, perspectives that we are looking at for the predictions: is for the greenhouse gas emissions, for the energy cost, and the energy consumptions. But they are all interrelated. That means if you have a uh, High greenhouse gas emissions, uh, so high energy consumption, you have high greenhouse gas emissions on that as well. And um, as I mentioned, based on the geographical locations of where you are, that affecting the climate zones that you select in terms of um, some calculations a little bit afterward. And um, we also, based on the Australian standards of the office size, that's why we separate it into six different size of the rooms that use it for the calculations. Because bigger rooms, obviously, you need bigger conditioning, but that doesn't mean that it's using more energy consumption out of that. And that's why we use that for the calculations perspectives. And um, this is actually is the actual um, calculations. You can see that we are only using a Excel and by Visual Basics embedded in it. And, uh, but you can actually have a lot of detailed calculations from those for us to achieve the results. How we do it in terms of the calculation part, um, show a little bit of a few formulas in here, a simple formulas. You can see in here is the energy consumption calculations. The main thing is the R value that we need to look into based on the thickness between the two walls and um, the, the, um, the R value. What is the R value? The R value actually is the thermal resistance of the building structures. But as you can imagine, talking about the building walls, you have a lot of different components in the wall system as well. You may have a lot of insulation system, you may have double glazings. All those criteria count in the calculation of the R value. And uh, we have to look into every single element of their thermal resistance value. And the total thermal resistance is just need to add them together. In general, it's about three to five of the value of um, thermal resistance based on different types of, this, of, the, of the structures. And um, in the greenhouse gas emissions calculations, as I mentioned, there are um, different geographical locations based on the climate zones. And that's what you use the emission factors to multiply with it. These are not done by me. These are done by a very detailed, comprehensive mixture already. And it's uh, published by the Australian government. And you can see it's based on the locations. That's why you multiply with the different emissions factor out of here. As I mentioned, there are different building envelopes. There's um, a lot of different walls and roof and floor systems that we are using. We are actually are using about 30 different types of the building structures based on what are available in the market at this stage. And um, obviously, the energy cost calculations, we have to use the net person value. Net person value, that means it's $100 at the moment, is different from $100 10 years ago. That's why you reflect that based on the inflation rate. And um, the model is uh, calculated based on using the Microsoft Excel, as I mentioned earlier, and is embedded with the Whistle Basics environment to support that. And um, the, all the calculations are based on the available types of building envelopes with 13 different roof types, 16 walls types, and three walls types that are available in the Australian New Zealand Insulation Handbook. These are actually some of the results that is um, found out from the model. This is actually quite a lot of um, calculations in here based on the life cycle details. I didn't want to explain too much because it's going to be way theoretical in here. But what we can find in here is, look at such a this um, figure is from Adelaide of a 50 years time frame of the greenhouse gas emissions. And um, you can see there are different types of roof in here that is predictive of what are the performance on different weather. Why they're up and down because of the weather system of winter and summer, and that's why they will have a variation, but kind of within a certain range. Which is the same thing for the others as well. This is the examples of the wall types in Melbourne, and this one is the floor type in Sydney, also based on different um, types of um, uh, available uh, floor types. But 
um, this will be showing a little bit more details of comparison of which one actually is the best. You can see that because of the R values will change based on the thermal resistance and, that, and also the greenhouse gas emissions and the energy costs as well of the optimization process. In here you can see that um, this is actually um, based in Brisbane and one single roof types and um, you can see they have actually going with a different energy cost. From this model, from these figures, you can see that different types have different costs, and obviously the lowest is the optimal cost that we are achieving in here. In another way, it's easiest to um, explain the process is these figures. That will also be um, shown from the model is you can take which um, geographical locations that you want. In this one, it's showing the camera and showing in the cost and greenhouse gas emissions um, reductions in here. And uh, roof, floor and, and uh, walls and different types of it, which one actually you can have the optimal results. As you can see, the greenhouse gas emission has the lowest and um, the energy cost is reasonably uh, comparable as well. Same for the other systems in here. And um, I have another table also summarizing different geographic location, which one actually is the optimal for different envelopes in here. But um, because of the name of that is uh, way long, they actually give a lot of details. That's why I put the um, notes in here along only. But those are all available under the handbook in the Australian New Zealand Insulation Handbook. Just some um, quick conclusions in here, what actually is summarized in here. Um, as you can see, uh, we have different aspects on roof, wall and floors under different climate zones, under the main eight main areas. And um, the models will be able to, based on the weather conditions and the climate zones, to actually provide an optimal performance for the individual organizations and the designers. And more important, probably the users can also involve as well because the whole life cycle perspectives are involved by all the parties, all the stakeholders in the project teams. And um, the model can be really flexible because it aims to provide the simplest way for you to choose how many credits that you want to achieve and which type of building envelopes that you want to go as well. And um, all the greenhouse gas emissions calculation, the cost calculations um, um, able to compare to each other. That's why you can see which one is the optimal among those. And um, this project um, is uh, supported by Australian Research Council Discovery Fundings. And um, just, um, just a little to knowledge on that. And thank you.